Another question is, I have a client database imported without delivery. How do I activate delivery service type? Oh, real easy. On the uh, cloud, you're literally just going to go to uh, store settings and go to services, and there's a toggle right there. Turns back on, turn delivery on. Uh, the cool part is, Jerry hit that if you uh, choose one of the industry types, it will set up you know, a series of flags, as he called it. Um, it turns on the basic settings that somebody might want for that kind of feature. And so if you're choosing a restaurant uh, for fine dining, it'll set on fine dining type settings. If you turn on that you're using QSR, it'll turn on QSR type settings, uh, and so on, so on. If uh, you have additional things you want to do, let's say you're doing a service industry, but you still do delivery, you can actually just go to the cloud and turn that feature on. No big deal, and it doesn't cost anybody any extra. There's no fees or anything for, for additional services like that. They're all included. Can you show the setup screen for printers? Yeah, um, I love this. Uh, this if you is come one in of my here, most You'll see I just went to the the little uh, door with the arrow there at the top. I chose hardware and immediately my system goes through and it searched the network looking for any printers um, that are on my network. In this case, it found one printer, um, happens to be the one I, I currently have set up. I'm on an isolated network. Um, and literally, I'm gonna disconnect this printer like that. That's how easy it is to get rid of or disconnect a printer. If I wanted to reset it up, literally, you touch, is it connected? In my case, I do have a cash drawer that's also connected. Boom, we're done, just that easy. Um, you know, if you want to do your kitchen printers, you can literally kitch, click on kitchen printer, and you'll notice across the top, I've got one through six sitting there. It's searching my network for any available printers, and literally I can click, they're connected. And there's my printer. That's all I have to do. If I want to test it and see if it actually prints, there's my test button. You guys probably heard it in the background real fast, uh, print. It's that easy to do. Um, the same thing with if I want to set up a bar printer or a packager printer or a label printer, you can do all those. They're exactly the same setup. Um, it's exactly the same, same methodology. Uh, one of the other things I want to show, you get to the end of your day, um, you know, how hard is it to, to go through the end of day process or close out your cash trays? It's very, very simple. You click on the little ellipsis there, you click on cashier, it's going to bring up your cashier options. In my case, I wanna to go to edit gratuity first. And then if I wanted to edit or change any of the gratuities for any of the transactions that I've been working on, you literally just click the little green square there with that information and I change the gratuity amount, just like that. Uh, that's now a $2 gratuity, it's updated piece of cake. If I'm happy with everything and I don't need to make any changes, I could literally hit now sign out. I get a little graphical uh, receipt of what all my, my information is. I can email this out or print it um, right there. You'll see it has a little email right there at the bottom like that. I hit cashier out. It goes through the cashier out process and is part of my cashier out process. It's capturing or updating my tips um, on the EMV device. Now this is gonna take a moment as it's gonna go through and has to update with the merchant processor all of the tip information. It's the same thing you go through with Aldilla for restaurants or Zara. Um, and unfortunately it's limited to the speed of the EMV device. So it can only go at that speed. And you can probably hear mine beeping in the background. There it goes, there's the final one. So once it's finished, now as you're used to, it will auto batch automatically for everybody, but if for some reason they decided they wanted to manually batch, you could click on the ellipsis, go to end of day, and it will come up, it's got some beautiful reports, it'll give you a lot of information here about what you're, you've been doing, these are you know, you can slide these up and down, you can move them, you know, left and right like this. Uh, you'll notice the three little dots at the, or the four little dots at the bottom. I can slide this to the left. It'll give me more information about my, my day. I can change the uh, date range at the top like this. I haven't had it, I haven't happened to do anything with access to diet or void orders. 
We can go like this. Here's my batching information. We'll batch here in just a second. And here's my end of day report, um, just like this. So if I wanted to review my end of day report, it's all there. If I wanted to close a batch, I can literally hit close batch now, and my batch is closed. Um, and you'll see it says batch is now successful. So very, very, very simple to use. Um, one of the other questions I get is if you have, you know, six, seven, eight, ten iPads, can you close the batch from one iPad and close them all? Or do you have to do each iPad individually? You'll notice there's a button uh, before I close the batch that was at the bottom for close all. There was also one on the individual batch. So if you had um, eight or 10 devices, you might have eight or 10 EMV devices and you could close each device individually if you wanted to, or you could simply click close all or settle all and it will settle all of them at the same time. Um, so it really is up to how they want to run their business or how they want to do that. Um, but again, it's all handled automatically when they, they set up the auto batch. So there you have it. There is the email and then the password for my account. What you're going to see are the same stores that you had on the back office that I showed you on the iPad. They're still here. This is the above store back office. So these are the same items, same stores that I had on the iPad. All right, sales numbers are coming up for the, the store that, that we just rang up. So that's the net sales for today. How many orders, new customers, and uh, labor sales. You do have the ability with analytics to go even deeper into the, into the numbers. Lots of different reports. Any one of these you can click on and it gives you more detail. So these are very usable reports, very user-friendly reports, and have the ability for drill down. Under the products area, now we still have the quick ad, so that you can do that just like you did up front. You have the quick ads you can do here, but if you want to get into the details, I think that was somebody's question, is how do you get into the details of these? So here are all the all the items by category. So choose an item. From here, you have a lot of options. Uh, some of these are pretty obvious, alternate names. So you can use uh, a, a two language deal here, or you can have an additional name for that item. This is where you can choose the color of the button or the picture that you want to have on the screen. The detailed pictures is, is it could be a different picture. Uh, the detailed picture is when you have um, a picture within the, a little drop up window. Drop, let me do this. So you, two fingers, touch the button. The picture that comes up here is the detailed picture. It could be a different picture than is what is on the menu item. So two fingers on the item brings that up. So that's the detailed picture. When you get down to here, you want to show some more settings. This, this is where the kitchen print goes. It's the print of the bar, label. Different pricing that you can have for the item, but it's not limited to these three. You do have the ability to have different prices by time of day, day of the week. 
somebody asks about the sales taxes, and here's where you apply the different sales taxes. So you're starting to see a lot more detail into the programming of that specific item. The item description, that is what goes on that detail of the pop-up. That's what this is, that description, whatever you type in here. Then you have the ability to do force modifiers as well as advanced modifiers. You can have a template and drop that down as well. Jeff, did I miss anything on this? Uh, I think you've got almost everybody's questions. Uh, Rick was looking to see if we can hide and pick items. Uh, yes, you can, but it's easier just to drag and drop them. Um, uh, Jerry, can you go real fast to the item setup again? Go right back to that. And on the right-hand side, grab one of the items. It doesn't matter which one. And just move it into another category. There you go. That's that easy, Rick. Um, it's a lot easier than hide and pick. It's fewer steps. Yep. What other questions do we have? Um, I think anybody I've missed on any questions? I think I've been trying to keep up here. Uh, tax included and exclusive based on uh, service type, um, including the uh, bar, but extra tables. Rick, we can definitely go into that and in support. Um, it's really easy to set up. The support guys can walk you straight through it, but you really have about four questions there. Uh, can you do the tax included? Can you do exclusive? Both of those, yes, absolutely. Can they be different ones based on service types? Yes, there's ways of doing that. And can you do um, included at bar tables? Uh, yes, they can do all that. It's all possible. And the support guys can go into that detail with you real easy. Uh, I have somebody asking, hey, they've got a, an iPad on eBay, um, but they're, it's saying not compatible. Correct, you must have iOS 11. So uh, everybody asked me which iPad should I use. We do have a list of them on our website. They do require iOS 11 or greater um, in order for you to download or use the software. Uh, and that really is because we're using the latest technology. Um, we're really good about keeping up with that and keeping up with Apple on those things. Um, and so it is a requirement. I'm in here showing the advanced pricing setup. Mm -hmm. So that you can have, all these items can have an, uh, their advanced pricing, choose by day of the week, start time, stop time, and then the price. So every item can have its uh, own schedule. There's item countdown. Then the quantity and start the countdown. This might have a question. Yes, can you also use um, uh, like scanners or uh, scales? Uh, barcode scanners are supported and you'll see those on our, our hardware page. And in fact, the newest one that I just put on there, um, you'll really like. You just pair it with the, the iPad and it's done. There is no further configuration. Um, so it really makes it very, very nice to, to use. Um, and it's not very expensive. It's about $100 for the, the wireless Bluetooth barcode reader. Um, so really, really cool. Scales are something that isn't there yet. Um, there's a lot of regulations around scales and, and INTEP, and those are going to take some time to, to finish that up. Okay. And uh, the other question is with uh, printers. Is it only certain printers, like the Epson and the Star, or does it also take, like, SNBC printers? So one of the things if, you know, uh, I'm going to tell you officially, Star and Epson printers are the ones we've worked with those manufacturers so that we can auto-detect those printers and make it simple for you. If you want to use other manufacturers, 
please don't call our support team. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, will they work? I don't know. We're not supporting it. We've worked really hard with manufacturers to make that um, where you saw it auto detected and found it. That was a lot of work and a lot of months of work. And we want them to keep it simple like that if we can. Okay, great. Um, I saw um, Gilson's asking what label model and what label size. Uh, we have the Epson uh, L90 printer is up there uh, currently. It is actually a really, really cool printer. Um, and the formatting and everything is handled by the printer. So if you put in an 80 millimeter, uh, just the sticky paper, which is the one I actually prefer and really like, it works really well. It's very, very cool. Um, and it prints uh, horizontally. If you put in vertical labels, it's handled by the printer. The printer will just turn that vertically and it'll be on there. Um, I didn't like the vertical labels as much. It really seemed a little bit squished to me. Um, but I, I may be over-dramatizing it. Uh, it's definitely worth taking a look at if it's something your customer wants. Um, but I like the sticky label. It came out and you had as much area to print as you needed. And of course it self-peeled it and everything. And you could put it right onto whatever thing, you know, we were running around coffee cups, putting it on coffee cups all day. So. Somebody asked about the receipt and ticket configuration. It's under store config, receipt and ticket configuration, and then here you go. You have your ability to format the guest check, the kitchen and bar tickets, packing ticket, and the item label. These are all areas that if you download the software onto your iPad, set up your account, then you too can have the ability to see everything you're seeing here. You can set up your own stores. Um, Jerry, would you mind, since you're there real fast, showing us one last thing. Will's asking, um, he didn't see where to find the printer configuration. Uh, would you mind going to items and selecting an item there? So we'll right here in item setup, you select on I'm going to scroll down to the advanced setup and, and you'll see at the very bottom of the, the uh, page. Oh, I don't know why I chose a different product. Let me do a different product, yeah. Yeah, do one that's not a top level product. Right. Well, let me find one that one's also a top level product. product for you. No, this one's not. So there you go. You have extended settings if you go down there. And it's literally an on-off switch or yes, no, right there. Printer number three is now yes. Number five is now yes. That's it. That's how easy it is to set up printers. Yep. Anything else, guys? Jeff, if you have multiple iPads, is it, um, I realize if the internet goes down, it, I'm, I'm assuming it'll be a native solution, so it's going to work on each individual iPad and just wait for the internet to come back up to sync? Um, actually, even cooler. Um, if you still have uh, your local network, um, your printers and everything will continue to work as long as you don't lose your local network. Um, and of course, everything, as you pointed out, will store locally and stuff and will sync once it's completed. The iPads themselves do require internet to sync between the two iPad devices because they really need to know who's opening what and when. And we can assume that payment processing goes as well with internet because no yeah, offline. Yeah, they'll okay. go offline. Uh, but one of the things uh, I chatted with somebody on the the chat here real fast. Uh, if that's really a concern for your customers, uh, they can go and for under a hundred bucks from AT&T and Verizon, both sell these, you can get a modem that has a uh, SIM chip in it. So it'll go to your favorite provider. And if you lose your local uh, LAN going out to your, your uh, provider, it will switch to cellular. And therefore there should be zero downtime. 
And I know AT&T, when I talk to the guys there, uh, at least here in California, they're saying, hey, it's $25 a month for for data on it. So it's really cheap okay. um, and should make it to where it never, you know, is an issue. Um, so Our code scanning, other peripheral hardware, that's on the website? That's it's on the website. Yes, awesome. sir. Um, and then, uh, you have to forgive me, I have, uh, can we add more than six uh, printers? Right now, we do have six printers. We really don't have too many times where somebody asks for more than six. Um, if we start getting that request, sure, we can program in more. Um, the nice part is that's a cloud update and it's something we can do um, if there's a, a reason to do it. But with Aldello for Restaurants, it's come up so few times in 20 years, just wasn't an issue. Um, this says, will there be any lag if the unit's not connected to the cloud? Um, the nice part is everything's operating natively, right on the iPad. So having internet, not having internet, having slow internet doesn't affect a single thing. Um, it's actually really cool. Uh, I tested down to uh, 36, six uh, bits per second because that's as slow as my Cisco router will allow me to down to. Uh, for my local Wi-Fi connection. Um, and I've got a database with 4,400 items and outside of the initial download of my menu items and pictures, because uh, 4,000 pictures is a little bit to do. Um, you don't notice any difference between a database that got 4,000 items and one that has five. And as far as being used, when you're clicking on the buttons and everything, that's native right there on the iPad. It's not going to the cloud until you settle that up uh, thing. You know, uh, maybe I missed this when you were going through the items, but is there a provision in there to copy the same attributes of another item so it would have put the printers and everything already in for you? Sure is. Um, you'll see when you click on an item and you go in there, they'll have a spot that says, uh, you have to forgive me for a second, catch looking for it on the fly. It is, Group, category, skew. Because in Aldona for Restaurants, it was copied the same attribute as options. Um, shoot me an email, I'll find it for you. Because there is an option for that. I think it's in the extended settings. Um, okay. That's what I'm looking for now. Attributes as. Yeah. yeah. I know what you're talking about, Jeff. I've used it. Yeah, I'm just not seeing it off the top of my head when I'm yeah, looking. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> And it's new to us still. We're still, you know, as much as me and Jerry would love to say we're experts and we know where everything is, nah, it's a new Not product. Yet. It just literally launches tomorrow, officially. Yeah, well, it looks very cool. Thank you. Uh, the other thing is, is when you're putting in modifiers, what do you go to a special uh, place? Like you do with uh, Dello, you put all your modifiers in, then you break them out into, uh, you know, modifier templates and things like that? Jerry, can you scroll down to the bottom of the page you're on currently? Oh. So I'm on the modifier setup. Yeah. And there's a couple of different ways you can do it. There's more than one method of, you know, doing things. You can obviously go straight to modifier setup and set up modifier templates, just like you do in Odello for restaurants. Or you can literally click on an item, scroll to the bottom of the page, and you'll have a spot there that says uh, show extended settings, modifier setup, and prices. And you'll have two little blue buttons. There they are. It says configure force modifiers and configure advanced modifiers. And it literally is just a matter of following the, the prompts. It's really easy. So the advanced modifier, the configure uh, advanced modifiers, or that would be more or less the modifier templates that equal to that. And yeah, that's adopt. exactly, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. So uh, Dan's asking, can you split an item uh, among multiple guests? So one of the features we did not do, and it's very much on purpose, um, this does not split items. It allows you to go in and take hundreds of uh, payments per check and keep the check open as long as you want and add more items as long as the, the check's not completely settled. Um, but Otherwise, people wanted to do too many crazy things. Um, and we had to go, okay, we got to draw a line someplace. Yeah. 
um, with the feature set. So we gave people the ability to literally split the check in a billion different options. Um, so they, and they can even print the individual split, you know, the, the individual checks and things. Um, but it's not a feature where they can split items from one ticket to the other. 